Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bish's RV in Junction City, Oregon with the 385 Front Living Alliance Paradigm. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with this thing. I've seen, I've seen so many, like I, I've you know, seen Momentum, Montana, Pinnacle, North Point, all these different big front living rooms and still Alliance manages to pull a rabbit out of their hat and do some crazy different things that just kind of catch my attention. And really the, the way that they, uh, they did the, the bedroom and the half bath on this to make it a little bit better and more travel accessible. That's really what got me, but that's just one of a bunch of little great things that they're doing here. This has a 40,500 BTU air conditioning system. We've got double Asdell walls. So the walls basically are all uh, aluminum and composite. Uh, their benchmark chassis sets this up for a 101 inch wide body, giving us uh, just fantastic, big open feel in every room. But she's, uh, also completely carpetless and the slide flooring matches the main flooring which makes it look even bigger including the kitchen slide this does not have that annoying toe stubber uh step up kitchen slide that you find in so many big fifth wheels you've got a little guest half bath um right by the entry door but what i love the way that they did this differently that half bath doesn't feel like it's in the kitchen so you don't have that like feeling like i don't want to crap where i eat pal well you don't have that here to me at least it feels separated enough and if you're going to make a quick travel stop man you're in you're out the travel functionality on this for a big giant fifth wheel is fantastic now you're going to need a fantastic pickup to handle it uh she weighs over i think 14,000 pounds or something like that this is a big son of a gun why, that's because it has some big son of a gun kind of features to it. And I can't wait to see what you think about this. Leave some comments as we know. Let me know what you like about it. And let me know the one thing you would change given the opportunity. So there's all these big fifth wheels, right? And if you ask the people who work at those companies, they all say they're the best. Isn't that funny? Um, something I've always believed is they are all the best for a different reason. It doesn't always mean it's the best fit for you. I want to show you some things that Alliance is doing and how they might be doing it different from some other brands. Maybe not everybody, but, uh, you know, in, in different areas. Like a true flush floor kitchen slide, not a little toe stubber. So you can actually, you know, get right up to the oven. You can stir your mac and cheese or whatever. You can get stuff out of the microwave without having to, like, lean forward and throw your lower back out or what have you. And you will notice over here also on the main deck, our dining slide is really the same thing. Now, as long as we're looking at this, I I'm showing it right now in just couples mode because I think that's how this RV is going to be used more uh, more often than not. But it does come with a pair of these fold-away guest chairs. And notice how I have that not like in the um, not folded out position. So it's standing more straight up. So first of all, it can stand on its own so it doesn't fall down and smash your nice cabinetry or trim and fascia. The other thing is I had some of the legs in the slide and some of the legs on the floor. Well, you can do that here because once again, this is a flush floor system. Something they're doing very differently here though. And it took me, I, I'm glad I learned about this. It makes a lot more sense because when I looked at it, I'm like, are you serious? These are not ducted air conditioners? No, no, they're not. Um, so every Alliance RV, or every Paradigm rather, has a 40,500 BTU total power air system. So these right here, these are a pair of 13,500 BTUs. So you have 27,000 uh, BTUs of cooling power right here in the main living room. They only cool this space though. They're not trying to push air through ducting in the ceiling, which is being warmed by that beautiful summer sun. Uh, that allows them to operate more efficiently. And this is a 50 amp coach. It can run all three airs at one time. You can run two of those airs on just 30 amp service, which is cool. There's also a third air conditioner standard on every paradigm for the bedroom and bathroom. And that will be ducted only to those rooms. Now you may notice here, you got those blackout nightshades and you've got the dual high to bed sleeper sofas. Uh, <laughs> sofas. They do not meet in the middle. They do not necessarily see eye to eye as is going to happen from time to time in the world, I suppose. But what I'm getting at here is uh, if you need to kind of walk between them for some reason to get to anything, you can. Now, I like to kind of put you in the driver's seat. I'm going to take a, I'm going to cop a squad at all these different sofas at some point, And you'll get to see, they're uh, like all of the windows open for maximum airflow in here. And I love that crown molding lighting, especially if you're going to use this, uh, these hide beds for a guest sleeper space. One of the things that's really nice about that is if you got a little one, who's maybe uh, afraid of the dark a little bit. I'm, 
I'm not proud to admit how old I was before I stopped sleeping with the lights on in my room. It wasn't in my 20s. It was, it was old enough. It was old enough. We're going to leave it at that. M maybe it's just better we don't get into the specifics exactly. So right in front of us here, nice big LED smart TV. So, you know, if you got various subscription services or if you want to fire up the YouTube app and see... What new video I'm putting out for you when you're on the road? You don't have to miss a thing. You can Steven Tyler that thing, baby. Um, all the cabinetry here, all wood core, pocket screwed. And they do a neat little hidden storage thing beyond, uh, behind the fireplace. That right there, that is where my Kentucky Ridge running Tennessee Moonshiner uh, ancestors definitely would have found some use. Now, uh, wow, there, there's a bit of a reflection of a balding head in that mirror right there, I, or that window. I'm not, it's glass. Okay, you get the idea. Anyway, I, what I'm getting at is I was a little surprised there's not a strut to hold this open. Now, that's a small space. I don't think you're going to get in there every day anyway. But what I did notice is even that's still soft close. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, the TV does not pivot. So I wanted to give you a look at it. When you're sitting on one of the side sofas, it's still not bad. And considering the fact that the main theater seat that faces directly at it, that is probably the primary chair that you're going to be used to watching TV most of the time. I'm okay with that. You know, uh, if the guests come over and you're having a Super Bowl weekend or something like that, you know, you're doing your fantasy sports picks or something, you put the people that you don't want to win, you put them all the way up front. By the way, if you've ever seen a group of people doing a fantasy sports draft, you realize it looks a lot like a group of people getting ready to play Dungeons and Dragons. It's just people with clipboards and spreadsheets, and they're looking at their numbers. Folks, that's Dungeons and Dragons right there. Uh, sp spoken from a D and D nerd, uh, fantasy sports is just D and D for jocks, and th and that's okay. I'm not I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying stop criticizing me. <laughs> uh, over here. We have a, a, a 110 theater recliner, by the way, a, a power theater recliner. So if you've like, had your knees redone, it's a little hard for you to get up and down. It is kind of nice to be able to have, you know, the power up and down. It's a little slower, but I think the folks who are probably getting into a paradigm prefer the power recliner. Is that Does that sound about right? But whether you prefer cuddle compliance or get the heck away from me individuality, you got, you got a little flip-down armrest console job there to take care of y'all. Now, uh, our kitchen counters are all solid surface, including this little divider here. Um, and they do kind of a little bit of a, a multicolor cabinet situation, but they do it in a way that I think it, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't really bother me. Like, inside the, the, the main part of the kitchen slide, it lightens and brightens up, which, which works for me. Now, outside of the slide, you have kind of that same warm chocolate uh, wood tone over here. And, you know, this this wall right there, I glance, uh, like that little divider wall, it, it helps really give definition of the living room versus the kitchen, you know? It felt a little plain vanilla to me. And then I kind of realized that you're going to put stuff there, appliances there, coffee makers, I don't know. Little things like that, it just kind of, I'm like, huh, okay, well, you know, that actually does make a little bit of sense here. Now, I want to give you just kind of a look around the kitchen, and then we are going to get everything opened up for you. One of the hiccups with a lot of front kitchens, or nope, with a lot of front living rooms, though, is it does apply some pressure to the kitchen, and I do think some of that is represented here. I think that they managed it very well, though. And one of the big things there is just, what are you doing for pantry space? But notice... This right here, in a lot of front uh, living, like rear bathroom, master bath kind of things, a bath and a half, that would be where the, the half bath would be located. And you don't have that here. So it doesn't feel like you have a bathroom like directly in the kitchen. Now, what we're looking at today is something you actually don't usually find in Paradigms. And that's the gas electric two-way refrigerator. Traditionally in these, and, and the standard, uh, the more popular uh, choice, is a residential fridge. I'm in the Pacific Northwest right now, and these folks camp off the grid with regularity. So it's no surprise to me, really, that they have the more power-friendly, the 12-volt, uh, you know, battery power-friendly when you're untethered fridge in this thing. So know that it's an option. Convection microwave and a big residential size one at that. But what I want to draw your attention to is right below that, either side 
of the stove. It's more of a symmetrical kitchen, giving you counter space on either side, so when you're done stirring your whatever stuff, you got a place to put a spoon. But those appliance outlets in the slide wall, you have to have a little bit thicker wall to be able to accomplish that. You might notice that's one of those a little more home style insignia four burner stoves that you can actually put some big pots and pans on, which is important because this is the kind of rig I think some people are planning to spend some serious extended time in. This isn't just your, your casual little weekender. Now, so far, if you've been keeping score, you've looked at this and said, yeah, but that was not a lot of pantry space. And you would be correct, certainly. The good news is that's not all of your pantry space. So instead of one big pantry, you've got one good pantry and then the little one over by the steps. So I think that will be your primary pantry space so you don't have to go like climbing up and down things all the time. Now they put a big honking island in this. That's That should probably be uh, described that way in their, uh, in their brochures, I think. What I like about it, asymmetry. They put the big stainless farm sink off to one side so that you always maintain some good prep space over on the other, no matter what you're doing over here. And that actually leads me to two of the more special things Alliance is doing on the Paradigms. The first of which is like any little water fixture. So this sink, the bathroom sink, the shower, something like that, they all have their own individual cutoff valve. And the reason I think that's really cool Let's say you're camping and for whatever reason, like let's say you just, oops, we forgot to hook up the water pressure regulator and this part had too much water pressure and it, it damaged part of your water lines. Well, you could do something like turn off just the kitchen sink and still be able to take a shower. You don't cripple the entire water system. You might be inconvenienced temporarily, but you're not totally out of service. That's a smart detail there. Also, you might notice these remote controls. All these TVs are smarter than a fifth grader. Additionally, these drawers right here, if you wanted to move them, that is actually washer dryer. No, God bless America. I always say that. It's dishwasher prepped back there. Washer dryer. I say that all the time. It, it's the thing that washes the things. You get the idea, right? Okay, moving on. Awesome campsite window coverage over here. Again, the blackout night shades all the way around with the exception of the entry door. With respect, I personally feel like it's a miss. But as I said, this one does something different with its half bath right here that to me, it doesn't feel like it's in the kitchen. But I'd be really curious to know, what do you think about that? Like, do you think it's separated enough? Or does it still feel like, eh, no, it's, it's still, it's a little too close to me. Porcelain foot flush stool. And around the corner, one of the cool things you see in Alliance bathrooms are epoxy poured countertops. They got a good shine to them. They're nice and seamless. It's, it's just a different clean thing. Now, if you do have a guest, there's enough room around here for like a toothbrush and whatnot. You see the power outlets on the left if they need a blow dryer. And you see the wall control switch for the ceiling fan. We're going to look at that in a second. It does not have a medicine cabinet. I don't think it needs it though. For the most part, I think that the master bathroom will, will occupy that nicely. You notice this little boxy construction point though. You'll see why that is there when we get up to the bedroom. And I'm trying to go slow, not to make you motion sick, but that right there, that is what that Max Air uh, vent fan switch is for. Now, in terms of the space around the toilet, now I'm not gonna tell you it's huge and massive in here or anything, but this is kind of the travel bath. This is the guest bath. It's big enough people could get in, get out, you know. They, they did a good job of giving us a good functional thing here without really eating up a ton of camper space. Now, one of the things I haven't really mentioned yet, but we've actually passed several of them, uh, has to do with the, the lighting package in here. A neat thing that they're doing is any big bank of ceiling lights, they let you dim that down if you want to, which is kind of, because like, let's say it's, it's late night, it's movie night, you, it, it's kind of nice to sometimes have just a little glow. You don't always want it super, or when you first wake up or when you're going to bed, you get the idea. Now, did you notice again, this air conditioner is centralized because that pushes air between the bedroom and the bathroom, but that's the only ducting in the ceiling. It doesn't have to travel far. So you're not losing, uh, you know, cooled air inside of a, uh, you know, a sunshine hot duct or anything like that. Uh, over here on the door side is also an interesting place to find a bed slide like this. It's kind of necessary to rearrange the half bath the way they did. But I kind of like, like for security purposes, you're laying in bed and you hear a funky sound. 
You've got uh, all these different opening breeze windows on the door side of the RV. But by, by the way, you may have noticed a scenery change. Um, this RV took me, uh, like, I, I ran out of time the day that I started recording it. And what I found out is they had, like, sold it overnight. So it got moved over to our uh, service and prep yard to get uh, ready for its, uh, you know, its final destination, as it were. So uh, the good folks here were kind enough to let me impose on them. I mentioned that little box in the half bath. Well, that's that little, I don't know, mini loft? But it's got a power outlet in that. And I'm wondering, like, what is that? What would you do with that? Would that be a phone charge pocket? Is it? Like, do CPAP machines reach far enough for that to be viable for the person on this side of the bed? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. At the same time, I, I like that they just didn't waste it. I would rather have a weird pocket of space instead of no pocket of space, personally. That's just my two cents on the topic there. Oh, by the way, we are looking at a king bed here, but if you want to, you could swap in down to a queen. Because like a lot of RVs, really smart forward thinking, that is a queen-sized bed base, but a, uh, well, I don't want to say true king, but like an RV king size. Oh, you know what? There's some wiring here, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to remove those side stands off both sides of it, I bet you could actually fit a residential king in here. That's a super rare find. Or if you wanted to go with that queen bed, you could make it far more CPAP friendly for sure. You'd have room for big side stands. And I love this over here. This is a little boot bench. You can sit down. You can, you know, put on your pants. You can put on your shoes. You can put on a show. I don't know why I'm singing. Um, <laughs> and you say dresser, and they said yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. I la 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 la. Legend of Zelda hidden storage capacity. Remember, these are all smart TVs over here. And above one of them dressers, yes, sir. You see a pocket of hanging storage there that thankfully is not all of the hanging storage in the RV necessarily. That is one of the hiccups with something like this, like a front living room with all these slides and all this stuff. Um, personal hanging storage can sometimes, depending on how you want to use the RV, be a little bit limited. We're going to see what I mean by that as we pass through the bedroom and into the rear bathroom here. By the way, this is like all six and a half foot tall. You saw that there, there's this idiot that keeps following me around. He keeps showing up in that mirror there every time I go through this thing. Uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's, oh, you know what I didn't mention? And it's what you didn't see. And that's floor vents. There's not floor vents in here. Now, where we saw um, kind of tight space in the half bath, the, the, the space here in the master bath. And where the half bath was tight, this is anything but. You've got awesome elbow, hip, and shoulder room around here. It's a, uh, how can I describe it? It's an American size shower. And hey, you can see what the neighbors are grilling. <laughs> well, that's a horse of a different color. And once again, you can be like, hey, Uncle Gary, how's that chili cooking? Smells good. Okay. And speaking of that, <clears throat> smells. Uh, again, a wall controller for a big rain sensoring max air vent fan. I have been noticing this just, just mind boggling trend of big fifth wheels like this lately that do not, uh, have a bigger vent fan like that. And for the life of me, I, I just don't understand it. Good appliance outlet location, by the way, here in the bathroom, right down that big countertop space. And again, that's epoxy poured with another very large sink. I like that. I like that a lot. You can really get your face down in there and wash that. Although, make sure you don't gouge your forehead on that thing. I could see that being a little bit of an issue. I love it. I love it. Plays for a waste back. Whatever. I'm rolling with it. Place for a base. Oh my lord! Place for a waste basket in the bathroom. Okay, there we go. Nailed it, finally. Um, so the shower over here. Nice, big, large walk-in shower space in this. And again, we've got that good ceiling height in there. But again, I, I think the best way to kind of showcase that is to actually stand inside this thing. Ooh, I should have warned you that you need to wear sunglasses with the reflection coming off the forehead here. But the fact of the matter is, the headroom in this shower is fantastic. And this has a fold-down 300-pound rated teak seat. And kind of like I did in the uh, in the toilet space. Give you a little idea of the space around me. So if you do need to sit down to bathe or you need to, uh, you know, shave your shins like my Uncle Gary, you got the room to do it. 
because uh, I can tell you it's big, but when you actually see someone standing in it, and I'm a little over six foot tall, by the way. Now, height adjustable shower hardware, and you could use that seat as a place to like set your body washes, but I love that they still give us a little corner caddy, a little soap dish right there. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a ton, it just has to be something. But remember, I was talking about more personal storage space. That's where the bathroom can kind of come into play here because you always have at least one additional hanging closet. But on the opposite side of this, you got this big guy hanging out over here next to Uncle Gary. Actually, uh, you're in the shower. You need some privacy. There you go. <laughs> it actually kind of sticks right there. Anyway, um, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to realize that this is going to be either, you know, your just a, an additional big closet, broom closet, something like that. A uh, hide and seek champion space. You can uh, shove your mouthy nephew in there. Uh, or obviously you can put a combo or stackable washer dryer in this space. But it has really good hanging storage potential and capacity. It's just kind of spread out over a couple different spaces. But again, in, in a front living room, that's weirdly just common. But another thing that really shocked me on this one, this has some of the best travel functionality I've seen in a front living fifth wheel. Um, really kind of rivaling what you might find in the, the Jayco North Point 382 FLRB, the FLRB, basically the North Point front living room. You walk right in the door. That's where we're standing right now. Bang, refrigerator's right there. Now, which refrigerator you have, the two-way versus the um, the residential might affect that a little bit. Now, you can't really get to much else back here, but I don't know what else you might need to get to other than maybe a toilet, since you don't want to claw, uh, claw, you know, claw your way over the bed. I couldn't say it. Uh, and with the half bath right there, that is not going to be an issue whatsoever. So, uh, like I said, I, I just, I really continue to be surprised Impressed. I love the design, the innovation, the ingenuity that they have going into this. And I've all, I love front living rooms from the front side of things. Just the, the good looking symmetry of it. They always give you good looks. Uh, like I said, a little bit of a scenery change. What's funny is when this video ends, you're going to see that greenery again. Uh, a little insight into what I do. Usually when I record my intro, I just record my uh, outro right at the same time. So there's a little insight as to how I do some things. There's no specific benefit to it. It's just the way that I tend to do it. Good look on this. Now, a um, couple cool things. Again, I, I want to showcase for you a couple things Alliance is doing differently. They're using uh, double Asdell walls. So inside and outside, all Asdell. Now, it is a little bit of a hiccup. The fact that you have all of these slides over here on the door side of the RV. Because it kind of eats into your awning space. But thankfully, this one comes with a double awning. Now, without question, yeah, those slides are still chopping into our awning space a little bit. But when you open them both up like that, it, it does help kind of compensate a little bit. Now, again, I'm not saying it's the same, but it's something. At least it's better than nothing, I suppose. Uh, the uh, stable steps here. One of the tricky things with these stable steps and this door and this slide, the way they interact, and this is a little pro tip, keep you out of the service center. You cannot close those steps with that slide open because that door has to be like completely open against the sidewall of the RV, which cannot happen when that slide is open. So again, a little pro tip for you. Now, one of the like real well, I mean, literally, foundations of Alliance <laughs> is what they're doing with their tires and wheel package and everything. Um, they've got their 101-inch wide uh, benchmark chassis, but they're also uh, riding on uh, larger 16... Well, a lot of things in this class, I'm sorry. 16-inch radials, but 4K uh, heavy-duty Dexter Springs. A lot of big fifth wheels are on 3.5K springs. Um, they've got... A uh, little bit more aggressive brackets where everything kind of hooks together. 7,000 pound axles. And you saw that Moride CRE 3000 suspension system there with wet bolt uh, fasteners. Now, what that means is that if you do want to spend time on the road, this has a suspension package that, uh, you know, the, the, the moving, grinding friction parts can be lubricated so they don't just grind through and then just spontaneously break down on you one day. But we had an elevated upper deck. One of the hiccups with a lot of front living rooms is they have very limited uh, front pass-through storage that big fifth wheels are very well known for having. 
Well, um, they kind of compensate, like a lot of front-living fifth wheels do now, but not all of them, by, with this elevated section here just becoming monster storage. Now, if you're noticing down there, there's like, there's TV hookups, there's all kinds of things. And another thing while we're down here in the guts of this sucker is to mention the fact that it is all color-coded wiring. Um, Alliance is one of the very few uh, towable RV manufacturers who fully color codes all of the wiring systems in their RVs. Uh, I think it just gives them the ability to do a better job building it, and it makes it a heck of a lot easier to trace stuff down when you're doing service work. That is a fact. Now, this is like a big diesel pusher belly tray. And remember, with this being a wider body product, you have more room in here. So, uh, you know, uh, you want to put a couple like big kayaks side by side or something like that. You're, you're not dealing with just the small stuff in here. And that is like 800 pound rated, by the way. So that can even handle me after I've taken a trip to the old country buffet. This is, I, I didn't expect to see this though. When I slid that tray away, I went, huh? Most brands who give you some kind of slide out rear tray like that, you don't also get a 3000 pound towing hitch. Now keep in mind, this is uh, a long, big Bertha. You, uh, you want to do some tandem doubles towing behind this thing? Most states, it's going to be over a length restriction. Some states, you might need some kind of like, you know, uh, endorsement on your license. And some states go, <laughs> full send. Do it, brother. I don't even care. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, working our way up here, six point hydraulic auto leveling, and you do have a place for the stinky slinky tube down there. Um, let me get you up closer here a little bit, because one of the things I think they just absolutely did phenomenally on this model, that is the only sewer outlet on this RV. Now to me that is exceptionally well done, considering you have a bathroom all the way back there, and the outlet doesn't show up until it's all the way up here. That's a uh, that's a hard find in the RV industry. And that is definitely one of those things where Alliance was listening to the kind of full-time RVers, uh, you know, that, that actually use this stuff. And they're like, man, we don't, you know, we don't want multiple sewer outlets. We, we want this stuff in one spot. Can't somebody just do it better? And went, I got you, fam. But that's kind of one of the things I like about this brand. They just go, what do you want? Fine, give the people what they want. They're not like, no, 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 no. You're stupid, we're the smart ones. You need it this way and here's why we're better and smarter than you. They just go, okay, cool. You want all these things? We'll do all these things. Now my little jump box is what's powering us today. But you see how big this is. You can get this generator prepped. You can get a generator installed in it. All that stuff is uh, not a problem whatsoever. And as long as Alliance is listening, I've got a personal bit of feedback for him here. You know, this thing is big, it's beautiful. I wanna keep it that way. So when I flip open this baggage door, which I like that it flips open sideways so I don't have to, you know, like duck under, it just makes it easier to access. When I flip it open, if I'm not careful or if the wind grabs it, these twist latches are gonna, they're gonna dig the face of that up. It's gonna gouge up something, a little bumper, a, a post, anything to prevent that. It doesn't have to be flashy. It doesn't have to be expensive. By the way, you see down below that baggage door, you got a little propane cooker hooker right there. And I said, the front storage on this is a little bit more limited, but one of the cool things they do over here uh, is uh, on the docking center. And I haven't overtly stated it, but yes, these are hot, cold, camp rated, all that good news. Um, you know, uh, holding tank, heaters, forced air insulated, radiant barrier layering going through the belly, the nose, the roof, all the stuff you expect out of a big fifth wheel. They're doing it. They're doing all of that. Not a problem. But they're also making it easier again to do certain things, especially in the front living room where this gets tighter. They create easy access panels to get back into things like uh, your, uh, you know, water heater bypasses for winterizing and whatnot. It's, it's sometimes it doesn't have to be uh, uh, flashy, fancy, amazing. It doesn't have to be earth shatteringly different. Literally just give me a piece of wood that I can move out of the way when I'm done using the thing for the year. Whew. Man, I have done a lot of videos this week. I, I am whooped. Okay, anyway, triple air conditioner, like we mentioned, white AC shrouds, because again, maximum efficiency. They don't want to just, you know, it'd look cooler from the ground if they were black. <laughs> like Matthew McConaughey, be a lot cooler if he did. But you know what? It's a lot cooler on the inside because they didn't. 
Um, this one does not have the factory solar package, but you see the prep plug there that is available. And I, uh, you see the Guarantee RV Supercenter sign here. I'm in the Junction City uh, location right now at the service lot. And if you've never been here, you have to... You, this is crazy. If you're in this area, it is just one of the biggest, most expansive uh, things I've, I've ever seen. This is just our service lot. But one of the things I think is really cool about Bish's RV, Guarantee RV had a 50 plus year history. Haywood RV, where I came from, had like a 33 year history. Um, in, in Davenport, Iowa, Eldridge, Iowa, that was Terry Frazier RV. That's now a Bish's RV location. But the history of those stores is preserved. One of the things I really respect and appreciate about Bish's, also as a family owned operation themselves, is they don't like act like an Egyptian pharaoh and wipe out the history of the stores. It's, it's like a bunch of smaller rivers flowing as tributaries into one bigger river. It all pipes lead to the ocean, basically. And I, I think it really speaks volumes about the quality of the, the leadership at Bish's, that that's the case. So once again, folks, tell me what you think about her because I, uh, I had a ball today. This has been so fun to go through. Now, I, I definitely, again, I've tried to be fair, and if you appreciate the way I've shown the good with the bad as we go today, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Know that I will shoot you straight. I'm not a commissioned salesperson myself. Uh, I, I just try to put good, fair information out there, and I, I feel confidently that if we do that, we will earn your business here at Bish's RV when you're ready. And that's the other thing. Um, anytime we have one of these in stock, I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can see uh, what we have in stock, where we have it, how it's equipped, and what we're asking for it without ever needing to pick up the phone. Uh, so everything's a click away. It's all simple. You don't have to give us your social security number just to get a quote on something. We try to be easy, and we don't do hidden dealer fees either. So if all that sounds good, give us a call. Whether it's this one or any of the other just tons of things that we have here, we've got something for you. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone.